Hey friends, uh, today we're gonna move on in our module four. We're gonna do a deep dive vocabulary lesson and learn some new vocabulary. We're going to work in module four, which remember the title is The Continents. And our essential question for that is, what makes the world fascinating? We're going to think about our learning goal for this lesson today. Today, we will demonstrate understanding of adjectives or describing words by relating them to their opposites. And I'll tell you what opposites are in just a second. So let's have a seat here and look at our chart. Do you see our Lakeland lion? Remember, I'm going to be popping him in to different videos. So you be on the lookout and tell me where you see our Lakeland lion. All right. So what are opposites, friends? What are opposites? Opposites are things that are very different. They are two things that are as unlike each other as possible. Big and small are opposites. Now, why is it important to learn opposites? Well, it helps us understand the meaning of the word better. We're thinking about how the world is fascinating. And we can take a look into Rebecca Hirsch's book, Asia. And in this book, she uses adjectives or describing words to help us understand what makes Asia fascinating. We wanna make sure that we understand those words. And so let's go to this first example. In Modern Marvels, it says, the Burj, Khal Burj Khalifa in Asia is the world's tallest building. It has 160 floor. She describes this building using the adjective tallest. Well, what's the opposite of that, friends? Tallest is the word and, op and the opposite is shortest. Shortest, tallest, they're opposites. So understanding that they are opposites might help you understand the meaning of the word tallest even better. Let's check on some more examples, friends. We're gonna go to this page where Rebecca Hirsch describes um, the busy city of in Asia. Most of the world's people live in Asia. Some live in busy cities. People shop at a street market in Mumbai, India. You can see that this is a busy market. What's the opposite of busy? Hmm, if the people weren't there and it wasn't so busy, it would be calm. Calm, busy, they're opposites. All right, now let's look at the monsoon page. Wild weather. Asia has monsoons. These are strong winds. So she uses the word strong to describe the wind. And then she put a strong animal in the text as well. What's the opposite of the word strong? If you are not strong, you are weak. You're right. Weak strong. They're opposites. All right, let's look at page 14. Another example. Back here. The next sentence says, in summer, monsoons bring heavy rains. And you can see the rain coming down very heavy here. What's the opposite of heavy? It's light. You're right. So if the Rain is not heavy, it's light. Light, heavy. I think you're gonna know what the opposite of this next one is. Let's see, we're gonna turn to page 16 in the text. And she describes this snowy day in Japan. Some parts of Asia have cold, snowy winters. She uses the adjective cold to describe the winter. What's the opposite of cold? Hot, you're right, hot, cold. All right, let's look at one more example, friends. We're gonna go to the desert page. 
Asia has deserts. The Gobi Desert is dry. So she uses the word dry to describe the desert. What's the opposite of dry? Wet, wet, dry. They are opposites. So it's important that we understand the words that uh, Rebecca Hirsch wants us to know. It'll help us understand what makes the world so fascinating, what makes Asia so fascinating. It's gonna make us a better reader and a better writer when we use them in our writing. So let's review opposites one more time. Shortest, tallest, calm, busy, weak, strong, light, heavy, hot, cold, wet, dry. All right, friends. So when you're thinking about opposites today, I want you to see if you can tell me an opposite that you know. For example, you might go and turn your light on and then off. You're right. All right, friends. I'll see you next time. I hope that you think about opposites today. Bye.